As an Arctic blast pushes toward Texas, now is the time to act to protect your family, your property, and your pets. To help you get ready, the KPRC2 Severe Weather Team presents Houston Freeze Alert. Time to prepare. Hello, I'm Chief Meteorologist Frank Billingsley. I'm joined by Justin Stapleton and Caroline Brown. And let's start by saying the bitter cold that we had in 2021, this is not a repeat of that freeze. Correct. So that's some good news, but it can still be dangerous. It can still be costly and cause a lot of problems. Well, and most of these risks are avoidable. So over the next half hour, we're going to get you ready. Yeah, we've got everything covered from the four and even five P's, right? The <laughs> people, the pool, right? that's right, the pets, the pipes, the pools, plants, as, for, uh, as well as your cars, holiday travel. That's important as well. If you're watching us right now on clickthehouston.com, you can also submit questions for us to answer later today by entering them in the comment section below the KPRC2 Plus live stream. So we're going to start with the forecast for Southeast Texas and hopefully you're using the time before this Arctic blast to prepare not only yourself, but your animals, your pets, your family, your, your home, your swimming pools, whatever you have out there. This is the future cast starting with a very mild comparatively 7 a.m. on Thursday morning, 49, 50, 51. That's what we'll wake up to. And as we go into the afternoon, we're still in pretty good shape. In fact, looking for highs is, is up to 72 in Angleton, but notice at 1 p.m. College stations dropping to 45. So that's the beginning of this Arctic air that is surging our way. So once we get to 3 o'clock, it's about halfway through the viewing area. 30s and 40s to the north, 60s, maybe even 70 here and there to the south. But once we get to 5 o'clock on Thursday, that's when this cold air will be in place. And look where we get as we go toward 9 o'clock Thursday. 20s, mid 20s, low 20s, upper 20s. It is going to be a very frigid Thursday night. And then overnight into Friday morning, Morning, teens to 20 degrees downtown, 27 down at the coast. And look at these future cast winds. Thursday morning, no real issues. Calm seven, three miles an hour. But look as that front comes in. 20, 22, 24 mile an hour winds that continues toward the coast. There's 27 as the front makes it to the coast at five o'clock. Those continue to be very strong right there. 17, 16, 15 mile an hour winds. So as a result, the wind chills are going to be dangerous. As we go to nine o'clock on Thursday, there in the teens as we go to Friday morning. You're looking at minus one, two, three, four degrees for wind chills across the area. And the time that we'll see below freezing, 42 to 44 hours to the north, 36 to 38 hours at the coast. So this is a long period of very cold weather. We'll be talking more about the four P's coming up. People, pets, plants, pipes. Don't forget that. Here's a look then at the forecast. 30 degrees Friday. 18 for a low, and that's generally speaking. 38 to 44, a little bit of a warm up Saturday as well as Sunday, but 20 and 28 degrees as we go into the morning hours. So we'll continue to keep you updated on what you need to know about this very cold air that is coming in. And it is coming in, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, but as we said, the one bonus to this is, is that this will not be the freeze of 2021 because this will be a dry front as it comes in. Right. And what we've been seeing this, that, that also it looks like it is going to make sure it's got a pretty good punch with it as well and it's going to affect national travel. Yeah, the wind's going to be ter ter just terrific in, in so many ways. Yeah, definitely will. All right, so one of the most frequently asked freeze questions that all three of us hear about is what should I do about my pipes? Yep. Oh yeah, and meteorologist Cambro Marshall, he's preparing his home today. He has insulation and he's numbered it so he knows exactly which pipes they fit on whenever it's needed. Brilliant. <laughs> KPRC 2's Bill Spencer joins us from Kingwood with, war with more ways to prevent a burst pipe and those expensive repair bills. Bill. Hey, Frank, thanks a lot. I am joined right now with Randy Wilson. He is with Abacus Plumbing. He's a 40-year veteran plumber and a master plumber at that. He's going to show us one of the most important pipes that we need to protect, and this is the water inlet pipe that goes into your house. Now, why is this so key? Because this is where the water from the city enters your house. If this thing goes out, it doesn't matter the rest of your pipes because you're done. You're completely done if this pipe gets uh, if it gets messed it's up. It's frozen. That's yeah, correct. Exactly. Randy, why don't you come down here and show me? Sure. Now, you've already wrapped this part. Show me how we're going to winterize this part up here. Yeah, so first off, we're going to take this hose connection off. You don't want to have the hose in the way. Yep, get that out of the Lift way. Get it out of the way. And we already pre-cut some pieces here, but you're going to cut some foam, place it over the top of the pipe to finish this up. Yep. Put some tape on it. Yep. To hold it in place. Like 
that and then one more out here on the front cover this and when we've got this yes. are we good to go or do we need to even cover the nozzle and the and the thing here no so in a normal winter down here in texas it's probably be okay okay but since we're going to have some extremely cold weather you want to go ahead and wrap this as well you, so you're talking about putting more than just insulation we're talking about putting a towel and a plastic bag over this this is not enough yet folks R keep that in mind this is not enough so we're going to go one more step with the arctic blast we've got coming right that's correct so you can, you can take some rags some towels anything you might have in the house yeah you'll take and wrap them start them around here yeah take them around the bottom Put them in there. Get that enclosed on this side. You might need two. And then you're going to add a plastic bag on top of that. That is correct. We'll okay. Get this wrapped all the way around here. And then we're going to. Then we're just going to tape it all down. Randy, we'll be back yes. with you in a minute. Very so good. again, he's going to put a, a plastic bag over yes. all of that because again, moisture can't get in there. We've got to keep the moisture out as well. So not just a towel, but a plastic bag over that, and then duct tape the whole thing together. We're going to join you in a few minutes from now when we're going to tell you a couple of other steps you need to take. But right now, uh, this is Bill Spencer along with Randy Wilson, and we're reporting live in Kingwood. Thanks, Bill. The wind chill is going to be one of the biggest concerns as the temperatures drop later this week. In fact, you can see those temperatures. Frank was showing you wind chills in the single digits, even the negatives to our north. Now, we talk a lot about wind chill, but what does it mean? As your body is outside, you naturally lose heat through convection, but on a day without any wind, you actually get to keep a little layer of warmth around you. So when it's 36 degrees outside, it's going to be feeling like 36 degrees. Now, when we do have wind added, that actually pushes away your protective heat layer. You lose the insulation, and this makes you feel much colder. For example, 36 degrees with a wind of 15, you're going to be feeling like the 20s, but this event, we're going to be below freezing, feeling like the, feeling like the single digits. So hopefully you can stay inside, but if you have to be outside, it's important to understand what this wintry blast can do to your body. KPRC2 health reporter Haley Hernandez joins us now with that. Hypothermia is not a condition we typically have to worry about here in Texas, but with the freezing weather, you should know the warning signs, especially if you have to be outside for any extended period of time or if you're among the elderly or the very young. Hypothermia occurs when the body loses heat faster than it can produce it. Warning signs include this. You've got confusion, shivering, difficulty speaking, sleepiness, and stiff muscle. All of these are signs that you should get indoors or get someplace a little warmer. It can be life-threatening, so if you suspect somebody else is suffering from hypothermia, seek medical care. Move that person indoors, replace wet, cold clothing with dry coats and blankets. And truthfully, a lot of these symptoms are little-known symptoms of carbon monoxide. I'll have that coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you very much, Haley. Appreciate that as well. And we've got a special guest with us here. Yeah, Lisa Hernandez, who has a giant heart for animals, is joining us now with a reminder that people need to make plans now for their pets for the rest of this week. That's right. I'm always the one going, what about our animals? What yeah, about absolutely. Our animals? That's right. Thank you, Frank. If you guys do have a pet that's, being, that's used to being outside, the Houston Humane Society says there are a few things you can do to make bringing that animal inside the house easier. One of them is setting up blankets or towels in an enclosed space like a laundry room. Uh, take them out to go to the bathroom during daylight hours and consider bundling up pets that are more sensitive to the cold, including smaller animals and breeds that don't have a thick coat or that double coat. If you have outdoor farm animals, it's best to make sure they have access to a barn or a three sided structure with a roof. Blankets will also help offer extra feed and make sure water and troughs is not frozen. Keep an eye on that. Now to protect stray animals, knock on the hood of your car before starting it up to scare away any cats or kittens might be seeking warmth on that engine block of your car and it is against the law statewide for pet owners to keep their dogs outside without adequate shelter in freezing weather. So if you see an unattended pet outside for an extended period during the freeze, you can report that to 832-927-PAWS. You can also report it online at 927-PAWS.org. So Lisa, we're not expecting widespread power outages like last year, but people with aquariums have to take action. Yes, yeah, something you wouldn't maybe normally think 
thinking yeah, about. Right. Yeah, absolutely. In the event of an extended power outage, we will uh, also have information on how to protect your fish. Viewers can find that online right now by scanning the QR code there on your screen or heading over to click to Houston.com slash Texas freeze. All right. Thank you so much, Lisa. Our coverage continues after the break. Coming up, the risks of running generators and other appliances when it comes to carbon monoxide. Also ahead, ways to protect your sprinklers from costly damage during the freeze. Alert, if you are traveling for Hanukkah or Christmas, you'll want to have the KPRC weather app downloaded on your phone. Yeah, it's not just for Houston either. The cool thing is it'll give you weather alerts and forecast updates wherever you are here or across the country. And that's going to be really helpful because a lot of people are going to be across the country driving or flying anywhere in the path of this week's Arctic blast. So we want to give you a little bit about the national forecast. So take a look at what we have going on with this low pressure system on our weather graphics. We're going to go to that right now. There you go. There's that low pressure and this is a Wednesday that's going to move right toward the Chicago area. They're looking at blizzard conditions and easy six inches of snow over the Midwest. Very heavy rains along the eastern seaboard. That high continues to bring cold air and the winds are going to bring just frightening wind chills to so much of the country. So take a look the snow amount potential and this builds all the way in through the Christmas weekend. You can see as much as a foot if not more across parts of the Great Lakes, but fairly standard is going to be anywhere from six to 12 inches of snow. A lot of these locations in the Rockies 18 to 24. So if you are headed northwest, headed toward Denver, even toward Oklahoma into Little Rock, parts of Birmingham, Atlanta, off towards St. Louis, Chicago, Washington, New York. You'll be dealing with the potential for some snow problems, especially if you're driving, but certainly if you are flying. In the meantime, look at some of these numbers. This is for Thursday. These are the temperatures up north, minus 10 in Pierce, South Dakota. I have 29 in Chicago, 36 across Columbus. Factor that into what we're going to see moving on in. I've got minus 21 to 2 in Chicago and then minus four in Chicago, 17 in Oklahoma City, 21 in Jackson, 25 in Salt Lake. And then even into Christmas morning, we're at minus nine, minus 12, 10 back across parts of Nashville. And then if you look at the wind chill factor with that, minus 26, minus 36. If you're heading out of Texas, be prepared. It's going to be bitterly cold. Oh. Caroline. Oh yeah, especially if you're driving out there and still ahead traffic expert Anavid Reyes offers advice on making sure your car is ready for freezing conditions. And if you're flying, we have a link to track flight delays and cancellations on quick to Houston.com slash Texas freeze. Justin. Thanks, Caroline. You know, one of the things we also get about at least for a good chunk of when we were forecasting this uh, system to come in was is this going to look just like February 2021? The bottom line is no, it will not. And here's a couple of reasons why. If you look at just how cold we were last February, we were talking single digits, actual air temperatures there, single digits, 14, 14 downtown, 13 at Bush, and even down at the coast, we were at around 20 degrees. Now, the other big factor was is that we had seven days in a row, seven consecutive days where the morning lows were below freezing, starting on the 14th on Valentine's Day, going all the way including that day of 32 on the 17th to the end of the week and add in the precipitation that was in place. That's why it will be very different. This is a dry front coming through. Remember, we had the cold air in place and then we got the snow and ice over top of it as that juicy system came in. So widespread power outages because of the failure of the grid. I think what we'll likely see is some limited power outages, not necessarily from the grid, but from some of those strong winds that Frank was telling you about earlier in the show here. That's where we may be looking at a potential for some trouble as our freezing time won't necessarily be seven days below freezing each and every morning. We're talking about a consecutive 36 to maybe 44 hours before we'll jump up ahead of that 32 degree marker. If that's the case, we've got a much better looking forecast. And I know guys, we all remember this one as well. This was the big warning when we knew we were in trouble back in February 2021. The entire state was under a winter storm warning, and that is just not the case of what we're seeing there today. So that's certainly uh, good news to see as well. well. Justin, I'll tell you what, with those cold weather, a cozy fire may seem like a good idea for warmth this week, but local fire departments recommend only using your fireplace if it's inspected annually. You need to get it clean because that also reduces your risk of starting a chimney fire. Never use paper, trash, or liquid fuel in your fireplace, and make sure you keep anything that's flammable three feet away. 
Also, of course, make sure you extinguish the fire before leaving the room or falling asleep. We know how cozy it could be. And ashes, those should go in metal can with a lid and store them away from the house until cold. You know, the other big thing is too, Caroline, is if you're using a space heater, and a lot of us have those space heaters just for a room, make sure to turn off the heater when you leave that room it's in. Keep clothing, bedding, and of course the curtains at least three feet away. Certainly make sure you only use one that has an automatic shut off if it ever gets tipped over. That's really important. Plus, plug portable heaters directly into outlets, not into a power strip or an extension cord. A lot of folks don't remember that part either. I, and if the wind causes power outages near you, only only use a generator that's been properly maintained and inspected. Keep the generator dry and outside at least 20 feet away from your home and certainly away from windows and vents. You don't want that carbon monoxide getting into your home. Allow the generator to cool for 15 to 20 minutes before you refuel it if you have to. Just make sure you have a carbon monoxide detector inside your home to be super safe. You know, and that last point, Frank, is the yeah. one that really saves lives. That's the most important. That carbon monoxide detector. Uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely. Big time. Definitely. Actually, KP PRC2 health reporter Haley Hernandez joins us with more on the risk and warning signs of carbon monoxide poisoning. Haley? There will be people desperate to get warm during these plunging temperatures, but generators can be a source of carbon monoxide and so can running your vehicle in your garage. Do not do any of those things to stay warm. Having a carbon monoxide detector can alert you if there's a problem before it's too late, but symptoms that you need to know about of carbon monoxide poisoning include headache, dizziness, weakness, upset stomach and vomiting, chest pain and confusion. If someone has been exposed to carbon monoxide, get them away from the hazard and seek medical care. Carbon monoxide is replacing the oxygen in your body. So, um, and it's a pretty silent process. So, you know, the best bet is just to avoid these like not safe forms of heat in your house. I would rather people layer up instead. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you have an electric or a gas stove or oven. Avoid using your oven or stovetop to heat your home. That can put your entire family in danger. And as the doctor just mentioned, a better choice is to dress in layers and use extra warm blankets to stay warm. Thank you, Haley. Now, when it comes to sprinklers, don't forget about those either. Coming up, our Bill Spencer's back with more important tips you need to know. All right, it's time to tackle sprinklers. Oh boy, there are headaches oh, sometimes, yes, aren't they? Are. That's for sure. They're extra vulnerable to freezing conditions and can result in big repair bills. Yep. Oh yeah, and that's why KPRC's 2's Bill Spencer joining us once again with keys to keeping your sprinklers intact, plus more on preps inside your home during this Arctic blast. Bill? Yes, hey guys, I want to tell you, this is the pressure vacuum breaker. This is what hooks up to your outdoor lawn sprinkler system. This thing is key. If this thing freezes, the top is going to blow off, and you're going to be looking at a $400 to $700 repair bill. Randy, quickly show me what we're going to do to winterize this. Well, we're going to finish insulating it here by finishing this piece up on the top. Yep. Put on the insulation. Or that down, over. But we now need that's, more. That's need correct. More. That's not quite enough. So what we want to do is make sure also to cut this valve off. One on both sides yep. and drain the water out of this system. You do that just using a regular screwdriver? That's folks? right. Look, you put the screwdriver right Leave there, these fully it. open. Yep, turn it. The water will eventually stop running out. Yep. We wait till all the water's out of there before yep. we close it. You don't close it at all. You You're going to leave it. it open. Okay. And then to cover this part, you guys, you can't buy insulation for this, so we're going to use a towel. That's right. For and around the house bag. stuff. You're just going to wrap it around just like this, get it up over the top and around the bottom. Yep. Once you've got that on, don't forget to take your plastic bag, place it over the top of this, and fully encapsulate everything that you put on in towels. Fantastic. I'll show you one more thing. What this guy did, this is a really uh, on top of it homeowner. He built a box enclosure for the whole thing. Very smart. That is what you need to do to protect your uh, lawn sprinkler system and save yourself hundreds of dollars. Back to you guys. That's great, Bill. Thank you. So we know a lot of people are concerned about plants in their yard, especially after February 2021. Mm -hmm. So talk about being costly to replace. So make sure cold sensitive plants are well watered. If you can cover them, a frost cloth is the best thing, but sheets or blankets can also help.
Next on our Time to Prepare special, traffic expert Anavid Reyes has ways to make sure your vehicle is ready for frigid holiday travel. But first, in the event there's a power outage due to wind gusts in your area, remember you can still watch our weather coverage on KPRC2 Plus on your phone. Just search KPRC in your app store to find our free apps, including the new KPRC2 Plus app. KPRC2 Plus is also always on at clicktohouston.com slash watch live. Don't ignore it. Pool companies say keep your filtration system running nonstop while the temperature is below freezing. Next, make sure your pool stays full so frigid air doesn't get into the system. And finally, don't cover your pool equipment with a blanket, especially if the pool has a heater. If moisture accumulates, it can corrode components. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I uh, know. Nine million Texans expected to be traveling as we move into this holiday season. Nine out of ten of those will be driving. Oh my goodness. And in Houston, the Thursday and Friday before Christmas are expected to be the busiest on the road. And as you might expect, we thought we'd bring in an expert. That would be traffic expert Anavid Reyes with more on how to get your car winter ready. Make sure your vehicle is in tip top shape before the winter blast arrives. Check your battery, engine and tires and have a fully stocked emergency roadside kit equipped for winter weather. Temperatures are supposed to drop below 20 degrees later on this week. So some of the things that you need to keep in mind to keep yourself and your family safe on your holiday road trip. Of course, warm clothing, blankets, especially if you're traveling with pets. Make sure to keep an ice scraper handy. You may wake up to ice on your windshield Friday morning. And keep that gas tank full. Now is the time to go fill up to avoid gas line freeze up. That happens when you've got half a tank or less left in your car and you're starting your car in freezing temperatures. Also, keep extra cell phone chargers in your vehicle. You want to make sure your phone is fully charged in case you need to make an emergency phone call. Remember to pack extra water, snacks, and food for all passengers in your vehicle, including pets. I'm Anavid Reyes, KPRC 2 News. All right, thanks for joining us. A quick reminder that we use your pictures in our weather coverage almost every show. So if you can safely take pictures during this Arctic blast and share them with us on clicktopins.com, please do. And we've got much more on the upcoming freeze on our newscast and on the website. On air and online, we have you covered.